Good evening all and welcome to another video on All How That Ale. Tonight we are experiencing an interruption to the usual uh, chain of events. Tonight should be dark beer night, particularly a heavy stout, but it's not because on Tuesday I got my first Covid jab uh, outside of the trials. Which one am I going for tonight though? It's this one. It's free damn lager and it's completely and utterly alcohol free. And I'm going for that obviously because of the COVID jab and I don't want to have any alcohol beforehand because that's the recommendation about a week before is the uh, the minimum you should be abstaining for and then two weeks after. So for the next few weekends in a row, uh, it's going to be all alcohol free. So uh, yeah, what can I tell you about this one? Well, it is completely and utterly alcohol free at 0.0%. It says it right there in black and blue in this instance. And it's a non-alcoholic lager beer with uh, selected hops and malt of the purest variety, uh, if my Spanish is correct. So yeah, there's not a lot I can tell you about it. I paid about four quid for it in Morrison's for a six pack. Um, so yeah, 330 mil cans should hopefully be good value for money if it tastes good. All the recommendations that I've seen from people suggest that it is good. And I've been meaning to hunt it down for a while, but didn't get round to it. Uh, but I did spot it last time I was in Morrison's doing my, uh, my essential shopping trip and uh, yeah. Glad I picked it up, so let's crack it open into a glass and see what we think, shall we? So we're going to pour it into my vocation glass. And the pour is pale, but not too pale. A nice bit of colour. And we have... Quite a nice looking head on that. It's got a decent sized head at the very least. And it's, uh, yeah, it's crystal clear. It's a light gold in colour. Obviously we've got a nucleated glass which will always show off a lager well. Because um, it'll just bring the bubbles to the bottom of the head. Uh, that is, it's relatively foamy. Uh, it's not overly consistent, but you know, it, it looks good for a lager, let's be honest. So, uh, yeah, it's all right, let's have a whiff. Sweet, it does smell sweet. No grassiness that I do like in a lager, which is a shame, but sweet malt, lightly hopped. It's, uh, yeah, look at that, look at that carbonation rolling up the glass from the nucleation. Hopefully you can pick that up on the video anyway. Um, so it looks all right. It smells a little uninspiring to me, but it's more about the taste, so let's find out. Do you know what? It's not too bad. It's not too bad at all. It's light. It's malty. There is a little bit of hop in the background, but it tastes authentic. It does. There's none of that overly sweet malt, which is really, really good. Um, it's a little bit sugary, but... Actually, you know what? I quite like that. First thing I can say is it's got a really nice body to it. It's just about right. It's a little bit less than medium. It's clean, it's crisp, it's fresh tasting. It's the taste of summer. You know, you, you could imagine sitting on a Spanish beach, which is what I was meant to be doing in July last year. Um, alas, COVID got in the way. Um, but yeah, this would be nice and refreshing sitting on the beach or by a pool or indeed with a barbecue in the summer. It tastes authentic enough. In fact, it's one of the most authentic tasting lagers that I've tried. And when I say that, I mean in so like your mass produced lager. It's very, very close, um, which for lager drinkers is a great thing. Yeah, there's not a lot more I can say about that. It's good. Mm. So, free damn, the one in the blue, black and white can. What do I think of you? Would I buy you again? Well, we're going to go to that in a moment, but we're going to untapped scoreboard of joy first of all. I realised I didn't say visit the untapped scoreboard of joy, uh, which says it's got 5,320 check-ins in and a fairly average 2.33 uh, average score, really. So it's not overly well received, but 
then again, I do have to question the people who are putting everything on Untapped. Are they hardcore drinkers like I used to be? Or are they all dedicated AF drinkers scoring this stuff? Who knows? If you were a user of Untapped and uh, you're a mixed drinker, you know, AF and regular beer as well, let me know. Let me know in the comments. So we're going to judge Freedom Lager on the usual five pillars of judgment. Uh, starting with the looks, which now, you know, now the head has dissipated a little. It's, I say a little, it's all gone. Uh, just exciting it up in the glass a little bit. It's a good looking lager. It looks like it should. It's got the right colour. It's got the right sort of head. It's the right clarity. It looks like a lager should. I can't fault the looks at all. It's going to get the full point from me. Aroma is the first port of call where, you know, you could say it's won or lost. And sadly, it's lacking that grassiness that I like in a hop, that, that SARS edge. It's not got that Pilsner thing either. And I know it's just a regular run-of-the-mill lager. And it is a good one. It's just a little light and perhaps a little sweet on the aroma for me. Otherwise, though, it smells quite good. Uh, it's just light and missing that grassiness. So I'm going to give it a half on the nose. The body is good really good it's it's got the right sort of soft crisp mouthfeel and i know that sounds weird because crisp generally means quite harsh ish um when you're talking about the body and the mouthfeel to me um but it's it's, it's just right you know it's me slightly less than medium on the uh, on the actual body the mouthfeel is just right can't fault it at all it's going to get a full point from me which means we're already above the uh, 2.33 average score at two and a half Taste is king, and this tastes good. It does taste really good. Whilst it's lacking that grassiness that I love, and that kind of green, fresh taste, and it is fresh tasting, but it's not that green taste. It's it's really good, it's authentic. It's got everything about a lager bar that grassiness. It's got that sweet, natural malt. It's got a little bit of the hops sitting there in the background, and I've always found lagers tend to be Kind of real the hops a supporting aspect of the whole flavor profile and that's what we've got here i really really like it i can't fault it but like i say apart from the lack of grassiness um which i'm gonna give it the 0.75 and the finish on a lager i never expect it to be overly long and i do expect some of the hops to sit there and sort of titillate your taste buds a little bit more make you want to go in for another sip and it delivers it does deliver. I just wish it was a little bit stronger and a little bit longer than it is. Otherwise, it's still rather quite good. Um, what am I going to give it? I'm going to give it the 0.75, which means my scoreboard of joy, what we got there, one and a half, two, three, four out of five on my untapped scoreboard of joy, which I think is really rather good. Um, I say... Superb authentic taste. It's just, uh, yeah, it's just lacking a little bit of that grass, and that would have made it spot on perfect. Um, but yeah, otherwise, it's really, really good. So, uh, we're at the point in the video where I'm going to say something's fallen down behind me. Um, but that's been the beer. Down there are some buttons. You know exactly what to do with them by now. You've got like, comment, dislike, and subscribe. And do let me know in the comment section, like I mentioned earlier, if you are a regular drinker or if you're drinking alcohol-free as well. And uh, how do you score your beers? Do you kind of treat them as if they were alcoholic beers, or do you kind of gauge them on their own merit and give them that, that, that same approach that I do, you know, out of five, break it down, give it something sort of for each section? Who knows? Let me know in the comments section below. On that note, I'm going to say that has definitely been the beer. It's the last time I'm going to waffle, and I'll catch you again soon later.